feel happy because uh, you cannot change the past and everything that happened was a, um, an amazing experience for me to tour around the world, to meet different people, different um, cultures and uh, also uh, with, with the experience your vision always changes and uh, with the music I have other visions other desires because when you do something and you're done with it then you want to move on with new stuff so I really I'm really excited about what the future will bring and without uh, projecting anything on it you know just let things uh, come to me and how has your vision changed over the years you think um, more open I think the more I learn about uh, life, nature, people, I just want to open my mind to, to new knowledge and new experiences. This is really, I think, the essence of life and less attachment and more uh, desire for learning. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, just to illustrate my first point, uh, where you are in your career, you are being compared to some legendary names like Billie Holiday or, um, I don't know, Patti Smith, Nora Jones and so many others. I wonder how you feel about these comparisons. I think people need to compare, but, but I don't feel like I'm inspired by Billie Holiday for sure. Um, and also by uh, Patti Smith. They are great people and I'm very honored, but everybody is like, has different experience and different ways to express themselves. But I understand that people want to, to uh, compare. That's, uh, that's, that's okay for me. Okay. And um, it was 2015 when you came up with an album and you haven't been giving any concerts for the past three years. Is this some sort of a break in your career or no, how only, does it feel? It only two years ago. Okay. Because of... Uh, of uh, the pandemic. Yeah. So, but before we were touring, you know, I understand that my audience uh, may feel strange because when I do the album, I go for touring for three, four years, you know? So I'm not giving a new album or something, but I'm on tour. This is what I think music is for me, is I make an album and I go on tour. And not for only one year, but for two, three years to... My, my audience, is, is my friend. I want to go back to them, you know. This is the, one of the greatest experience for me is to be on stage. So people think that I'm out, but I'm not out. I'm very active, but it's, uh, it's more deep work, you know, on stage, meeting people. People define your music in various ways. How do you feel, first of all, uh, about these definitions and do you like the idea of defining your music as a musician yourself? I think nobody should define anything. Uh, every human has uh, uh, multiply, um, multiple uh, uh, things and I, we are not only one thing. And that's why I want to show it in my music. I'm not only blues, or only jazz or, or rock. I like all this and this is the question of identity also in these days when people say oh you are one thing you are uh, white you are african you are uh, chinese you are this is not true we are multiply we are uh, how do you say in multiplicité de choses we are many things at the same time so that's why i want to show it also in the music identity is not only one thing it's many things mm -hmm. and how do you think your identity, I mean, you are a Berber coming from a, a country with a strong Arab influence, but you have been living in uh, France for a while, but you're touring as well, you're traveling a lot. So just like you said, you're many things. How do you think the fact that uh, you have a lot of influences affected your music? It's power. It's power because it's openness power from being many things, understand many process of thinking, understand many culture, many cultures. So this is, uh, I think it's, uh, it's my way to be rich.
And it makes your music richer as well. Uh, I'm not scared of new food, discovering new uh, languages, new cultures. Uh, even I'm excited to know uh, new stuff about nature. So we need to be on this diversity, not only one thing. It makes us poor. It makes us poor to be only one thing. We could, can be many. So hearing your sensitivities about identity and diversity, I wonder what you feel about uh, the state of music right now. I mean, I want to say ethnic music or world music, but I know that they're controversial cate categories as well. So yeah, let's just say music. I think we need it more than ever. I think we need to, uh, because music, the thing it's, it's, uh, it's the opposite of what happened these two years. It's the opposite. Music is a reunion. Music is sharing. Music is being in the same time, same place, many people all together. This is music. So we need it more than ever. We need to rejoin, to be back together, you know, and to mix, you know, our experiences. And uh, music is, is I, I say it very often, it's the soul food. Our souls need to be nurtured these times now. When, when all, every, everything is about division, uh, being f uh, the fear, scared about others, this is, for me, it's a nightmare. We can be alone, but we have to be also all together. We need to go back to music, to share music all together. And is your soul being nourished by contemporary music, what we hear most of the time around us today? Yes, there, there's a lot of good things, you know. I think creativity is the power of... Uh, of God and, and uh, creativity is, is wonderful and it always comes with young people, young artists who bring a new vision. It's really interesting, yeah, yeah. And tell us about your musical idols. The, the, I have many, 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 many. Um, I think I love each artist for different things. James Brown, I love him because he brought music, uh, uh, soul, Afro. Uh, I think when I was a child, he shocked me. Then after there, it was Prince, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, uh, Aretha Franklin. All these people. I mean, there's too much. <laughs> okay. And all these names, and sometimes yourself as well, are categorized under world world music or you know ethnic music. And some people think that these categories are controversial because uh, it just makes the world sound like it's the Western world and the rest of the world or the others. I wonder whether you would agree with that sentiment and how do you feel, again, uh, being categorized under world music and whether you find it problematic? I think it's very interesting to see because I, I, let's think about history. Uh, African music is one of the oldest music. It's the mother of all musics, you know. Uh, even now, music, uh, modern music is inspired by African music. So uh, I find it funny that the, the roots of music are, are classified as uh, world music. But at the same time, it's ironic because world music, so we do the world music, which is <laughs> quite poetic at the same time. But this, this Western and other cultures, as you said, is very problematic and it will be more problematic and it will ask people to un view the world differently the more and more that this Africa is so young. There is the youngest population in the world. We say Africa is the future. And you, as someone who's made a name for herself in, in global scene, global music scene, uh, coming from Morocco, do you feel like you have some sort of a responsibility or, you know, some uh, sort of sometimes maybe a burden on your shoulders to be the representative of this kind of music? Absolutely not. I think it's a mission for me to do what I have to do, to sing in different languages, to also promote my culture, like Berber culture, uh, Amazir culture. Um, I don't think that it's a burden. I think it's, it's, uh, it gives me a sense uh, for my life and what I do. It gives me uh, 
vision, a passion, you know, and also to bring to the young Americans uh, the idea that it's possible to break the, the, the borders in our in our mind to go to other languages to mix with uh, with other cultures i think i'm happy to do it it's not a burden in fact uh, it's the opposite it makes me really happy well i really appreciate your time thanks a lot for joining thank us you. today on showcase thank you